You're listening to the God, God Life, Life Culture, Culture Podcast, Podcast, where faith and what's trending collide. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the latest episode of the God Life Culture Podcast. This is Eddie. What's up, everyone? This is Miguel, and you are listening to the God Life Culture Podcast. If this is your first time listening, we want to say welcome to our podcast. We hope that you enjoyed today's conversation. We hope that you become a recurring listener and that you come back to check out all of our episodes. And if you are a returning listener, thank you for coming back and checking out our new episodes and, um, you know, uh, engaging with us on social media and all of that we hope that you are being blessed by our content and our episodes um we have just gotten through thanksgiving (laughs) right and um we hope that you all had a happy thanksgiving that uh you had a great time with your family and friends and loved ones and now the christmas season is upon us it's upon us for many people the christmas season been done started once yeah. uh november 1st came around uh but now officially for those people that that like to have their thanksgiving decorations up and all that all that good stuff all that fall festivities uh now they're pulling out the reefs and the christmas lights and the kind of um, candy canes and all mm-hmm. that stuff or whatever uh, but it's also a time of the year where we have a lot of social gatherings oh, and yeah. i think that um you know throughout the year it's a little bit more spread out yeah uh, depending on where birthdays fall with some families you know it's maybe like every couple of months uh, but once thanksgiving comes around and then you have like thanksgiving christmas new year's and <laughs> it's kind of like you're seeing everybody back to back to back um which for some people that's a really awesome and good thing and then for other people's not so really yeah i mean i think some people you know naturally love being in like big groups large Mm. groups and yeah let's get all the family together yeah we're gonna do this yeah we're gonna do that we're gonna have this game and that game and all of that and then there are those individuals who just don't like the big group settings Mm -hmm. right for whatever reason um but i think more specifically you know there could be a lot of like conflict and tension Mm -hmm. right during the holidays you know for some you know where it's like you have a family gathering a dinner approaching and you know that like your whole family's gonna be there there's Mm -hmm. gonna be people that you haven't seen in a long time right and uh we'll often see the memes about this right where people Mm -hmm. are asking like you know you're still single or like you still don't have kids (laughs) you're not married yet you haven't found anybody so how's your dating life go you know and it's like those awkward questions that you know, we don't like to answer or we don't mm. want to talk about at our Christmas gathering. And that sometimes um, just turns people off from wanting to be there. And it's yeah. just a lot of, you know, working that people, some people have to do before they get there. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so I think we're going to talk a little bit today just about how do you deal with that? Right. Yeah. Like, how do you kind of get over that? How do you, where does that come from? Mm-hmm. What's the work you got to do? Right. Because at some point in our life, whether it's around the holidays or just, you know, at any day, you're going to have to be in sometimes uncomfortable situations with certain mm-hmm. people, whether people you naturally don't like connect with or don't want to be around or, um, you know, just things you have to get over, you know, with certain individuals. And it is a job and a task and it takes work and effort for you to put all of those feelings to the side to enjoy yeah right the dinner enjoy the moment enjoy the time that you have yeah and i think that you know the the, the level of conflict varies because it's you know like you were alluding to a lot of the times the memes are really funny when you have a an aunt or an uncle or just someone random that likes to ask questions or make comments that you know are a little uncomfortable you know they have the the honor the uncle that's like grabbing your chicho and saying like oh tu <laughs> or whatever or you have the ones that ask you about being single or about this or that um you know and i feel like those that level of conflict is just annoying because i feel like a lot of times because they're older out of respect you try not to come for their neck um, but I think that there comes an age where you're like, ah, oh, nah, th- that's it. You you coming after me, I'm yeah. going to grab your chicho back and be like, what about yours? <laughs> and make a jiggle, uh, you know? And I think that when it's those types of like, uh, when it's that level of conflict, then it's a little easier to navigate, especially once you're older, because sometimes people just need a, a, a spoonful of their own medicine. Mm. You know, whether it is that you point it out to them in a way of, you know, uh, Titi, whoever, or Uncle Tom, 
um, you know, oh, you know that I don't really like that question. That question makes me uncomfortable and lay it down that way. Or you go the petty route, which I think sometimes can be a little bit more fun, <laughs> which is like I said, they ask you about oh, your weight gain that you throw it back at them. What about your weight gain? Or you point out their wig. Or I don't know. You do something petty like that and get the point across. Uh, you're being inappropriate. So chill. I'm not that little kid anymore where you can make your little comments and they can slide. Yeah. Right. But there are other people that have like legit like conflict you know where relationships have been broken they used to be really cl- close with certain cousins or certain aunts and uncles and then some family drama happened some uh broken trust situation happened somebody said something to somebody else and you know a lot of things also get convoluted um and then you find yourself in a situation where you have to be at the same place as all these people and you're like oh i don't really you know do i go do i not go and then if i am there what is it that i got to do to to keep my own peace of mind yeah i think kind of the first step or the first thing that you can kind of do or think about is your attitude Mm -hmm. right about going um a lot of times you know i feel guilty of that too where you think about other people Mm -hmm. like like other people gonna be there this person be there that person's gonna be there and they're gonna mention this they're gonna make a comment about that and this is what i'm gonna say right so just adjusting your attitude to not even enter the situation with that level of intensity and tension before you even got there because what happens is you have all of that built up in that attitude and kind of those thoughts and feelings before you get there that when you arrive it's already so worked up in you that mm-hmm. you don't even realize that you you are bringing it into the, the environment yeah, yeah, you know what i mean and and you know again you're thinking about other people failing to realize you yourself are entering that space in that environment with all of that negative energy that negative attitude that is now spewing into conversations yeah. spewing into your face mm-hmm. <laughs> right spewing into how people are engaging and reacting with you and all of those things where it's like you really have to work on your attitude mm-hmm. adjust your attitude even before going and a part of a adjusting your attitude i think is preparing yourself for the individuals that will be there preparing Mm -hmm. yourself for i am going to see this individual maybe we didn't leave off on the best terms maybe we had a fallout maybe the last time we saw each other wasn't so good i know they're going to be there so preparing yourself both mentally you know to know how to address something if it comes up how to you know sometimes you just have to know i'm gonna see them i'll just say hello and kind of keep them moving yeah you know um and you have to kind of prepare yourself and go through all of those um hurdles right Mm -hmm. before you get there so at least when you get there you know and you've already processed and you worked within yourself i'm gonna see certain individuals that Mm -hmm. i may have had conflict with or i don't want to see or have you know we've had fallouts in the past prepare yourself ahead of time Yeah. And I also think that, unfortunately, there are times where you also have to alert everybody around you. So what I mean by that is, is that there are times where there's a conflict that happened. Everybody in the family knows you've come with the right attitude. But now people still thinking that there's a situation happening. People are messy and they like to, you know, bring and take information and stuff like that. You know, so if you get there, even leading up to that, when somebody's like, oh, you know, so and so is going to be there. Your response to that should be like, yeah, and. Like, we're good. Like, it's fine. Like, you know, I don't, it's whatever happened, happened. I'm not going there with that mentality. You have to let it be known because what happens is, is that when you don't shut it down and you entertain it, everybody's going there, whether it is consciously, subconsciously, knowing that you're going to be part of the entertainment of that night. Everything you do, everything you say, the way that you sit, the way that you hold that fork when you're biting into that turkey is like, "Mm, look at the way that they're doing this. And you're part of the entertainment of the night because you haven't announced. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to. There is no issue. There is no problem. I'm going to go. I'm going to have a great time and we're going to keep it moving. You know, you have to do that sometimes. So when somebody comes, whether it is leading up to the party or leading up to the dinner or at the dinner, somebody makes a comment, shut it down. Yeah. Don't feed into it. Yeah. Because a lot of times what will happen is, you know, we want the people on our side or we want them to like be with us and like Mm -hmm. a part of our team that we feed into it. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, they're going to be there and they better not say that they better not do this. And Mm -hmm. you begin to, again, cultivate a negative, you know, energy and this negative, you know, attitude towards that individual, towards, you know, the situation that now when 
then that day comes, like you said, you become a part. Everyone's waiting to see. Mm-hmm. You're part of the entertainment, waiting to see. Oh, how are they going to react? How are they going to engage? Are they going to say hi to each other? Are they going to mm-hmm. right? And you have all of this kind of you know small talk that's happening amongst individuals because you fed into it beforehand. Yeah. You know, and now they're looking at you like just waiting, mm-hmm. waiting for the moment you're going to erupt, waiting for the moment that you're going to say something that's going to spark you know a controversy or a conflict, and it's not cool. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, there are some individuals and some families, unfortunately, that thrive off of this yeah, yeah, like definitely. they are waiting for it to happen and when it happens like they are so ready mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it's unfortunate that even around the holidays around christmas or thanksgiving that this is something that takes place yeah. even among christians right mm-hmm. and even among believers sometimes you would expect this behavior from people that don't know god to have an experience god's love no these are people that are christians these are mm-hmm. people that believe in the lord that have faith in god yet still find themselves caught up in the mess yeah right like this around the holidays yeah i have a question do you think that if you have a conflict with someone and you're all you wind up going to be together because of the holiday let's say it's a dinner it's a party whatever it is that the conflict should be resolved there never in my opinion okay why or why not i mean why not well why not? So mm-hmm. to me, right, if it were me leading up to the event, knowing, you know, it depends. I think there's so many different layers to it because, mm-hmm. you know, if this is like a close friend of yours mm-hmm. that you have a relationship with, a friendship with, and you have a fallout, something happened, but you still want to be that person's friend. And mm-hmm. it's not like this is like a termination of a relationship, right? I would talk to them before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're going to see each other on Saturday for the dinner. Everyone's going to be there. Let's kind of talk about this before we get there. Right. Yeah. Um, always try to fix the issue beforehand. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something that you don't have a relationship with anymore. You don't have a friendship with them anymore. That at the end of the day should not bother you if they are there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If they are not a part of your life and, yeah. you know, that has been broken. Cool. You already, you know, whatever was done is done. You go into that party, that dinner, that gathering with, you know, yourself, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And all of you. But now if um, you're choosing now at the party to do this, it's mm-hmm. one of those things where you have to know the individual and you have to know yourself. Mm-hmm. Right. If I can talk to you and it could, I know we can hash it out in eight minutes mm-hmm. and you happen to be getting a piece of pumpkin pie and well, I'm getting, there uh-huh. and it's just us two. And I know like, it's not that serious of an issue. Mm-hmm we can talk about it right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see that happening, but you have to know yourself Mm -hmm. and you have to know the other individual. Mm -hmm. Cause now if you're about to engage in this whole, you know, apology situation or why did you do this? How could you, I'm still so upset. And now emotions get high. Mm -hmm. Someone walks in and sees what's happening and now they get involved and they're trying to, you know what I mean? It gets messy. Right. And I think oftentimes it's funny that you bring that up because I think people sometimes take advantage of situations like that. To, like mm. pull people to the side mm. at a party and like talk to them or pull people to the side in someone's house to like you know it's like that's not the time or the mm-hmm. place you know what i mean like you should have done this prior yeah right and even if you didn't know they were going to be there you didn't know mm-hmm. talk to them and say hey i really think we should talk at some point mm-hmm. you know next week or something like mention yeah. it that way what yeah, do you no, think no Would you i do think, it i think uh, majority of the time, no, never. Yeah. It's not the time and the place. Um, but I do think that there are opportunities that do arise where you can, mm-hmm. you know, if like, for example, I remember being at an apartment. Uh, one of my friends had invited me over to an apartment uh, Christmas party thing or whatever. You know, it's a small one bedroom apartment. So everybody's in the sala. There's, you know, everybody sees you going to the kitchen. Everybody sees you going to the restroom. Everybody sees whatever. And then uh, someone else was there that wanted to, like, talk to me about something because they felt a certain type of way. And it's like we have to both walk out. Everybody's watching us. I'm like, no. No, because it's making it a spectacle. Uh, but if it's a situation like you were saying where you just happen to be seated at the same table or you just happen to be getting something or whatever, you know, I think that there it does open a window of opportunity to either do what you said, which is, hey, I think, you know, we, we should next Saturday. Are you free? Let, let's grab a cup yeah. of coffee and try to hash it out. Yeah. Or if the opportunity is there, you had a big venue. It's a big party. People right. over there. Nobody's paying attention to you and you want to take a couple of minutes. Then, yeah, because I think that sometimes... Um, feelings change, you know, where you went in there like, oh, I can't stand this person, whatever. Now you see them and then you're like, you know what? 
I was being yeah. I was being petty or I was being dumb or I was being too angry or whatever. And they may feel the same way and want to take advantage of the opportunity to approach you. Um, but should you make it, like I said, a spectacle? No, never. You know, you guys should not be the main event. You guys should not be the thing that everybody is seeing or what's going to happen. And like you said, you have to know the person. If you know the person is a type of person who in order for them to get to a place to be like, I know I did wrong. They have to debate you on everything. It's not the time and the place. If it's the type of person that could hear what you said, will say something, you could hear what they said and yeah, squash it, then maybe it's something you can get done under 10 minutes. Uh, but it's really situational. But nine times out of 10, I would say it's not the time or the place. Yeah. It really isn't. It really yeah. isn't the time or the place because that's not what you're there for. If for some reason it is an opportunity that God gives you guys to do it, then absolutely take advantage of it. But be wise about where you're doing it, who's around you while it's happening. You know, are you guys looking like you're fighting about to like choke each other out? Or does it look like resolution is happening? You know, it's stuff to be mindful of. Yeah, because again, you know yourself, you know the other individual. And, you know, you know emotions are going to get high. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start yelling. You're going to start yelling. I'm going to start crying. You're going to start crying. Like, mm -hmm. do you want all that happening at a party? You yeah. know what I mean? Do you want all of that happening at your, you know, son's, you know, third birthday? birthday party mm -hmm. like it's not the time or the place for all of that yeah. but like you said i think you could always take advantage of those moments to say hey we should talk soon mm -hmm. like throw it out there you know mm -hmm. because you are both seeing each other because you are both in that space you know but one thing that you can do or can control is obviously your reaction to certain things mm -hmm. right and i think that this is kind of a big lesson and something you know that we should focus on the idea of controlling your reactions and knowing that a comment can be made you know someone can say something someone can do something that bothers you mm -hmm. right but you have the choice to actually drag it out and let it continue to bother you and you have the choice to just like ignore it and walk away yeah. obviously if someone's hurting you harming you that's a different story but the idea of a you know a slick comment that someone says that you know you know they have no right to say or they're trying to get a rise out of you they're trying to you know get you to get emotional right that is something that you have the ability to control yeah. walk away right and i think oftentimes it's very difficult to walk to walk away so what do people do they react they mm -hmm. respond they say a comment back and then there you know all of a sudden now there's an issue happening as we're trying to get soda at the party mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so it's this idea that you can control how you react not everything needs a response from you mm -hmm. sometimes ignoring it is a response sometimes walking away is a response you know and a lot of times people will you know, and this is, again, you know, where you have to watch out who your friends are, watch out the people you have around you, because sometimes even your friends who may know the situation mm -hmm. will try to hype it up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or will try to tell you or will even, you know, say something out loud to you, like mm -hmm. to try to get you to go to that place or get you angry in that way. So you just have to watch out again who you included in all of that. Right. Yeah. In that conversation. But just accepting the fact that, you know what, I have the ability to control what I say. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to control what I respond to. And at this family gathering, I am not responding to nonsense. Yeah. At this family gathering, I'm not choosing to respond to, you know, the individuals who are trying to get me to lose my cool. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So going in there prepared and acknowledging the fact that, you know what, I'm accepting that this is what it is. And the only thing I can control, obviously, is how I react in yeah. this situation. No, I agree with that. And I also think that there's a mentality that people have to be OK with, um, which is where sometimes you had conflict with someone and the conflict either it resolved or it's one of those things that you've decided is not that big of a deal. The person will never get it. It's just let's squash it. And but that also means that it is at the cost of that relationship where you guys aren't as close as you used to be. You have to be OK with being in the same space and not navigating that relationship the way that you used to. So just because me and you used to be friends, hypothetically, me and you used to be friends, something happened. We're no longer friends anymore. We're going to wind up being at this party together. Doesn't mean that now we have to put up a performance for everyone of, you know, we're good. Look at us. We're cool. Like come sit next to me or anything like that. Like, no, you're OK over there. I'm OK over here. Um, and. I shouldn't also go out of my way to try to be extra friendly to someone because now we're in public and we don't want people to talk. I don't, yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense, yeah. but I've been put in a lot of situations personally where, you know, the, we're no longer as cool as we used to be. So it's OK. Like, I'm perfectly fine navigating my bubble here. 
there's no reason why you f- you should feel the need to have to interject yourself into that bubble or feel the need to have to include me in things when we're not even cool like that anymore. Uh, because I think it puts you in a situation of awkwardness that's not necessary. Yeah. You know, sometimes relationships do fizzle. Relationships were only for a season or someone in that pairing messed up. And now that relationship was tarnished. There are. Uh, uh, occasions where things get fixed and people are stronger than ever and they're better than ever and all that great you know stuff and then there's other time where it's not it's not the same and it's okay that it's not the same and i think that sometimes people find that to be uncomfortable where you know it's like they 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 don't know what to do like do do i invite them or do i not invite them do i tell them to come sit here or do i tell them to do this and then everybody else is also i feel like people will take cues off of how you react you know, if you're the type of person who can walk into a situation like that and be cordial and be peaceful and nice and keep it at that, then people are going to pick up on those cues of, OK, I understand the dynamic of what's yeah. happening. If you're someone who isn't great at setting those boundaries and it, it's very messy, people will be messy along with you, too. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things where don't allow conflict and don't allow all of those thoughts and feelings to then keep you from actually going. Right, because oh, yeah, yeah, then yeah. that's the other thing. It's like you lose out on moments, you lose out on special family gatherings or f- gathering with friends because of someone that's going to be there. You know what I mean? I mean, there and are exceptions. There's always exceptions, there's exceptions. to exceptions. everything. Sometimes Obviously, it's like don't even go yeah, because you know yeah, that the person is volatile, is toxic, right. will make a spectacle, will right. you know make a show out of right. it. So then, in those situations, they're like, you know what? It's not even worth it. Right. I'm gonna go to the movies. But if it's like your parents and your siblings are going to be there, but your aunt is gonna be there, that always makes comments about how you look or this mm. or what. You know what I mean? Like, g- grow. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna let someone. You know. Uh, ruin a whole family gathering for me oh, because yeah. of what they're going to tell me. You know what I mean? So it's like going there and still enjoying your time and mm-hmm. having that moment. She may say something. I'm ignoring it. I'm not giving it life and I'm not giving it energy or time. Right. But don't miss out on certain moments mm-hmm. because of individuals that will be there. Obviously situations with harm, causing harm, affecting your mental health, all of that, you do what's best for you. Yeah. But if it's just because I don't like that person, if it's just because, you know, they're always acting weird around me or they're always saying this, that the other thing, right. It's like, don't miss out on moments because of people, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Especially when it comes down to family, Mm -hmm. right. Your family's your family. Listen, the ultimate life hack on how to navigate this for the holidays is to host. You host, you set the set the guest yeah. list. You pick who's gonna go. What's the space? What's the venue? Whatever it is, and you don't have to worry about having individuals that are gonna be there that you don't want to be yeah. there. Now, if you're you'll so- deal with like aftermath of certain things of why certain people weren't there. Why oh, but you that's if you that, like listen. You know? you know that. Well, but there are people that that's that, like you know. Yes. I don't want to deal with the after. So I'm just gonna invite them. No, you see that's you see these people are the issues that. where people don't set the boundaries that yeah. they need to set, and unfortunately, it comes off really like um. It can come off to people that don't understand you as being hard, hard, um, cold hearted Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever. But at at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this is what is best for me. Mm-hmm. what what is best for me is to i'm doing a party whatever it is i'm doing a thanksgiving potluck i'm gonna invite these people who i decided to invite is who i decided to invite if you wanted to do a thanksgiving potluck with all the people i invited then you should have did that you can still do that make it a christmas potluck you know i should not have to navigate my decisions and what i do in my life and who i include in my circle because of your feelings if you're someone mm-hmm. who i do not vibe with or you're not someone that i'm close with i'm not maliciously not including you it's just that we're not friends we're not friends there's a conflict going on we try to resolve it and it is still whatever i'm going to keep it moving the same mm-hmm. way that if you the person i have an issue with decided to do something and invited everybody didn't invite me I shouldn't get upset. I can't be offended. Why would I want to put myself in a situation to be uncomfortable? Yeah. There are people that do that, mm-hmm. that they purposely put themselves in situations that they want to be uncomfortable because they either invite the person they have conflict with or accept an invitation for someone they have conflict with. And these are people that thrive in those environments and have an issue admitting that they like the drama. Mm-hmm. Because if you didn't like the drama, you wouldn't put yourself mm-hmm. in that situation. So... As for me and my house, <laughs> we set the RSVP list and we invite who we want to invite because we don't want any issues. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go ahead and invite people just because, oh, no, so-and-so is going to feel left out. If we have an issue, or we're not cool like that. I don't invite everybody to my house. Do you invite everybody to your house? No. There's people that invite everybody 
into yeah. their home. That's a problem mm-hmm. that you're always constantly invo- inviting everybody into your home. No, that's not good. Yeah. So and and that's not that is not something about oh no as Christians we're supposed to show the love of God and your your door is supposed to be mm-hmm. open to everybody and no 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 that's not the same thing. Because you can be loving and caring and generous to people regardless if you vibe with them or not. But your space is your space. That's yeah. your haven. And you control that environment. So you get to set who you invite and who you don't invite. Mm-hmm. That was my tangent. I was Anybody's sorry. name you need to throw out there. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded very personal, but it wasn't. It's just legit. And I think yeah, it yeah. comes from a place no, of observing mm. people mm-hmm. that have conflicts with other people that mm-hmm. are constantly in that circle with them. They Mm -hmm. don't resolve the issue. They don't speak about the things that they have to speak to, but are constantly engaging with them, doing dinners with them, going out with them, doing this. And it's like, I don't know, as someone who's watching from the outside in is like, I could never, I could never, but they do. And that's something that they have to deal with. And hopefully, you know, God will resolve that issue for them. So that's that. So, yeah. We're not even going to get into the conversation of God resolving people's issues for them. Well, no, that's, that's true. That's that, that, I should not have said that because that doesn't happen. You have to put in the work. You have to put but, in the work. For uh, that, I but. understand what you meant. No, but I absolutely agree with what you're saying. And just uh, the idea of, obviously, we've spoken about this before, protecting your peace, protecting yeah. your space, protecting, you know, your family and your yourself. All of those things are very important, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and around the holidays, that's just kind of one thing, right, mm-hmm. that we can talk about. But you know the other stressors that come around the holiday season mm. that already have people on edge yeah, right yeah. then you add something like this to the mix it's like of course that person already is on the edge right mm. like i can't take credit for this but i found this um the harvard medical school right mm-hmm. put out this whole thing where they were talking that the holiday season requires us to keep track and pay attention to a lot of things and responsibilities more than usual so the brain's prefrontal cortex goes into overdrive and over time of having your mind in that state of overdrive it says that there's a high level of demand that decreases your memory and half production of new brain cells which cause existing brain cells to die Mm. so the whole thing is basically saying that of course people are super stressed around this time and are having like situations and spats with individuals because there is a lot already on their mind right and they are literally losing brain cells you know how we joke around and we'll say things like yeah this conversation just made me lose brain cells Mm. like i'm losing brain cells as we speak no you actually really are (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean so it's just one of those things where added all of these added stressors around the holidays definitely affect people and how they navigate these conversations how they navigate their attitudes how they navigate these gatherings and social gatherings and all the things that come about because of the holiday season so our encouragement to you is that this is something that's unavoidable at times yeah, yeah. you know what i mean there are times where it's within your realm and your influence and you can't avoid it you can go around it and you you know can like you said choose who you invite but then there are moments where you really can't avoid the situation you know Mm -hmm. what i mean so don't let it get you down don't let it allow you to miss moments right and um if it's something you have to resolve then choose the right time and place to have that conversation and get it done but don't let it ruin your holiday season don't let it ruin ruin your family's gathering and your family's dinner and focus on the positive focus on the people that you do like focus on the relationships that you do enjoy and the people Mm -hmm. you do love investing in and let that be your reason and motivation for participating yeah absolutely at the end of the day we hope that you guys walk away with the fact that you will be put in situations that you'll be around people that maybe you don't vibe with or something happened but you're in control of that environment and how you react to things and what you do leading up to that and even after the event itself for so. sure yep so we hope you were blessed by today's conversation mm-hmm. hit that subscribe button so you can be notified every time we drop a new episode you can follow us on facebook instagram and youtube at god life culture podcast and uh we hope that you are enjoying this holiday season and um all the things that it brings yeah so thank you once again for tuning into the latest episode of the god life culture podcast that's god, god life, life culture. culture until next time See ya. bye